When we first start our businesses, we have this idea of being an entrepreneur and being a business owner and running our business and building a team and building a culture. But if you're like most people, myself included, there are many years there, especially at the beginning and for some, for a longer period of time, where you feel like your business owns you and you don't own your business where you're working in the business, it's really hard to get out and work on the business and elevates being a true business owner. My guest today, Eric Obrant, is someone who has gone through that journey from working in his business, literally putting on roofs, to now being a business owner to where he resides in a different state and he and his family travel all over the country on a regular basis. But this did not happen by accident. It did not happen by chance. It was a very intentional decision by Eric to build this type of company where his roofing company, DNA Roofing and Siding, is in Omaha, Nebraska, and he lives in Houston, Texas, and the company is run by a team very, very well. I know a lot of those team members. Eric has developed his team method, T-E-A-M, to build his team, and today, he joins me on our podcast to talk about that team method and to talk about why that is so important and how it has helped him to build such a strong organization. So tune in and take some notes. Eric is a wealth of knowledge, someone that I have gotten to know personally over the past several years, an awesome leader, awesome business owner, awesome human being. So without further ado, Eric Obrant. What's going on, Eric? How are you? Good, man. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks. You are uh, home in Houston for a little while in between travel, as it looks like. Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm glad uh, glad to be home for a couple of days. So, but back on the road in a couple of days. All right, cool, guys. Eric has a lot going on. If you're not familiar with Eric Obrand, check out some of the links below. Whether you're listening, whether you're watching on YouTube, somewhere else, he's got a lot of different things going on. We're going to touch on some of those things today. We're going to talk about his team method. We're going to talk about his different uh, initiatives and businesses and something new he has that he's coming out with in just a couple of weeks. And, uh, and some of the lessons that he's learned along a, a very long career so far, and in some ways just getting started. So let's dig in uh, to that in a little bit. But before we dig into that, just give everyone a, a little overview on who is Eric O and, uh, and what you're up to. Great question. Eric O. So I am a... I own DNF Roofing and Siding uh, in Omaha, Nebraska, and then we just opened up our location in Texas. So we are just north of Houston in the Montgomery uh, County area. So we like to claim Montgomery County, I learned after I moved out here. So um, everybody else can claim South Houston and we claim North area. So, But yeah, so we opened up down here, which is really exciting. Uh, I've been in the roofing space for, I'm 44 years old and I've been doing this since I was about 10. So been doing this a really long time, started working with my grandfather, you know, when I was a kid and, uh, you know, started selling when I was 16 and got my first truck and, uh, gave me a yellow notepad and said, go sell that. You've been watching me long enough. And so I did. And in my mid twenties kind of started helping run all the day to day stuff and then tried to figure out how to work smarter, not harder, uh, which at that time meant how do I get off the roof? Uh, because that's really hard work. And so I figured out how to get off the roof by selling more and selling some residential because we were a hundred percent commercial company back then. Um, and so once that transition happened, then I started running more of the day to day and did that for quite a while. And then grandpa passed away about nine years ago. Um, I took over the rest of the company and then we kind of started expanding and growing and hiring people. And that's where we are today. Awesome. Guys, Eric was on the Nailed It show about three years ago, uh, 2020. So okay, we're going to link below if you want to learn more about kind of the the rise of that business, DNA you know, Roofing and Siding, and and some of the details there. Super uh, interesting story. But we're going to skip ahead for today. I want to take it in a bit of a different direction because uh, Eric has evolved in those past nine years. Uh, you got a couple of different things going on. So. You want to touch on those things, Eric, with like Be Authentic and Roofers in Recovery, and we'll wait till the end to, to tease out the new thing you have going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I learned over the years, and and to be completely frank, like just becoming friends with you, right? 
is is all about branding. And it's not just about business branding, but it's about personal branding. And I was always very uncomfortable uh, doing that. I was uncomfortable putting myself out there and um, letting people know who I was. And then some of that comes back to the stigma of addiction, right? So like I've, I've been sober for a little over 13 years. I'm not as, you know, like I have no shame in it now and I have no problem talking about it, obviously. Um, but I, but I, it was always weird to put myself out there. And I made a decision however many years ago that I needed to start building my brand. But here's the thing. I had no idea what the fuck that meant. And I had no idea what it, what, what it would do, right? Or what it would lead to, right? So I was just told by all these people that I had to do this thing. I was like, okay. So I started the podcast, Be Authentic or Get the Fuck Out. I started that because I saw something missing in our space, which was people that were authentic to who they are and not pretending to be somebody else. So we started that podcast. And honestly, I did it because like I just wanted to like meet people and like get to meet cool people that I maybe wouldn't have had access to otherwise. So it was really? kind of a selfish thing. And I was like, this will just be fun. And it turned into a thing where like people really enjoyed it. People liked it. We talk about recovery and sobriety and we talk about business challenges and, you know, all this different stuff. And they're funny, right? But it built this brand to where now people actually see it and they want to come work for me because now they're getting this opportunity to see who Eric really is. And I don't have to go sell myself for the company. Everybody's like, oh shit, that's the culture that I want to be a part of, right? So it's been very interesting to see like, Everybody's like, oh, do you make money off the podcast? And I'm like, no, but indirectly I do because I get all these people that come to work for me that I probably wouldn't have had access to. Really interesting. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, podcast is uh, it, it's such a great thing. I mean, hopefully the content's good. Obviously, yours is good. I think ours is pretty good. But you're right. It gets you access to people that you wouldn't normally have access to like you're not, not going to dm someone be like hey man you want to hop on a zoom for half an hour i'd like to get to know you you know but it's like hey you my podcast and everyone's like yeah uh i've only had a couple people who have said no and that's nothing personal they're just like more private and they don't like to do that sort of thing that's fine yeah people love to like get you know have a platform and talk about themselves and, the, and to share dude that 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 that's everybody like what's everybody's favorite word it's their fucking name me Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's their name and everybody loves talking about themselves. So if you can figure out a way to get people to talk about themselves, they're also going to connect with you because that's what they want to talk about. And then eventually, hopefully they become interested in you as a person as well. But if you ever go in with the intention of like, I want this person to know who I am, like you're fucking, you're, 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 you're screwed from the get go because you're not, you're not going in with the right mentality. But if you go in with that mentality of like, Hey, I want to get to know you. Like, tell me about yourself. That's how all this works. Yeah. What do they say? If you want to be interesting, be interested. You got to be interested first. Yeah. hundred percent. someone else than you. Yeah. Yep. All right, cool. So you got these people that want to come work for you. They've seen the podcast and things like that. Uh, I want to talk about that because you're in Houston. You live in Houston with your family, which you share on social media a lot, which is really awesome to see. I think people probably connect with that aspect of your life a lot as well. Yep. And- DNA Roofing is headquartered in Omaha, where it's been for over 50 or 60 years. And that company, I don't want to say it runs itself because I think that's a, that's a lie. That's what people probably want to believe. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of tension that goes into that. But you've got a team of people that run that organization while you live uh, in another state. So I wanted to have you on to talk about that because that's something that not everyone aspires to do that, to be able to have a company and go live somewhere else. But I think that notion of like, hey, I started this business so that I could have more freedom, so that I could have you know uh, control over my schedule and my income and who I get to work with, and I don't want to be in the business all day every day. I want to work on the business and elevate and things like that. I think a lot of people that start a business and myself included, at times you feel like, man, like having a job be so much easier. Uh, work fewer hours. I could show up. I could clock in, clock out, go on vacation. Now I've got this business that owns me and I feel like a slave to it. And I'm just like, I, I can't like figure out a way out of it. So I think a lot of people like will relate to certain aspects of, of, of your situation right now. So 
just paint a picture of, of what that looks like in terms of like who runs DNM in Omaha and, and how that works logistically? Yeah. So it took me a while to get to that point, right? Because at the end of the day, it comes down to people. You know, it, it comes down to people and that you have people that have bought into your vision, that have bought into the vision of the company and like what it stands for and who it is, because it is this like living, growing organism, right? And if you don't treat it as such, then it can fail. And so you have to get people that buy into what you're doing and why you're doing it, right? And and it took me a while to do that, but I found those people. I groomed those people so that I knew that I could trust them, right? If you don't have people that you can trust, that it, it's not going to work. You have to keep building that, right? So back in back in Nebraska, I've got a general manager. I've got a director of operations. I've got a uh, director of commercial that handles all my commercial sales and commercial builds and all that. And, and, and I'm not not involved, right? Like I'm checking in daily. I'm having meetings, you know, every week we have team meetings, you know, at the first of the week, every week, checking in, checking numbers, all that kind of stuff. I have a commercial meeting every week and then, you know, like call each other, have texts or whatever, uh, you know, throughout the week, but we're intentional about staying connected, right? Because if I'm sitting there in the office, what extra is actually getting done, Right. I either trust them to do their job or I don't. So if I don't, then I need to go find somebody that will do their job, right? That's the thing at the end of the day, you're not hiring people to just be your assistant. You're hiring people to own a position. And so if you're not hiring them to do that, you're not giving them the responsibility and the ability to go solve the problem, then you're just hiring a bunch of assistants. You're not hiring people that are going to actually grow your edit. So again, I don't want to say that I was lucky because obviously I put in a lot of time and effort to figure out how to do that, but I am very grateful and fortunate that I've got the team that I have up there. And, and I'm already building that here because this location's newer, right? But I'm here, right? So it's easy for me to go run into the office. But like as much as I travel, I'm in that office, I don't know, 10, 12 days a month. Right. So it's not like I'm there either. Right. So before I even started it, I knew that I had to find the guy that could be an extension of me and that could buy into the vision and and pass that on to every new person that comes into the business. And I found that person and I didn't open up the location until I found that person. That was my first hire. It wasn't an assistant. It wasn't a fucking, you know, production guy or a sales guy. I mean, he happened to be a sales guy, too. But like I had to find the person that was going to be the extension of me that I knew was going to be there every day. So you have to find those people. How did you find that particular person? Well, a lot of that part of that was branding. He found me. Ooh, I like that. I, I like that. I, I didn't find him, to be completely frank. He he messaged me a handful of times and I was like, dude, like no. But like I blew him off two or three times because he had his own thing going. And I was like, I don't really know how we'd work together. And he was like, no, 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 like, let's have a meeting. I'm like, all right. So we had a meeting and I'm like, okay, no, we align. Right. And I figured out that we aligned. And then I was like, I got to figure out what I got to do to get you on my team. Because my job okay. isn't just to fill positions. It's to hire the best people and then figure out where they sit on the bus. Awesome. Yeah. Because if I have really good people, but maybe they're just not performing at a high level in what they're doing, then let's mm -hmm. change their seat. Yep. Right. Because it costs a shitload more money to fire and hire a new person. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Time, money, time is money, all that stuff. Yeah. So great person there in the personal branding. Yeah. I mean, people, people will seek you out. And that might be customers, that might be team members, that might be people that maybe want to buy your company or partner up on some kind of commercial deal or property deal or whatever it might be. You never know. And, and I think there's this like, you know, a, a lot of a lot of owners this day, a lot of business owners these days will say like, man, it's so hard to find good people. Like, where do you find people, you know? And I think, you know, you don't, you don't build that brand, whether it's company brand, personal brand, or both. And it's going to be way, way harder to go out it and is, find that. It is. And, 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 and people that say that aren't wrong. So, right. It is hard to yeah. find good people. But the difference is though, is what are you doing when you find a person? Are you expecting them to automatically plug and play and just fucking be amazing? Or are you spending the time to groom them 
right? You're giving them proper training. You're giving them the vision of, of your business. You're investing into them as people, right? As well. And you're doing all these things to grow them just like somebody grew me, right? That was my grandpa. And then obviously as I went out and I tried to learn more and tried to find mentors, all that kind of stuff and masterminds and different groups and all that kind of stuff to be in. But am I, am I investing in them and then getting them to invest in themselves, right? Because at the end of the day, I don't like people being in my organization that don't invest in themselves as well. What do you mean by that? Invest in themselves. What do they so do? So one of our core values is education. And it's not just education for the client. It's education for our people. So they have to be open and willing to constantly learning, right? Constantly learning. Um, I mean, not to be harsh, but I don't want a bunch of fat fucks in my office either. Yeah, same right? here. Like, like, I mean, either care about your body, care about your life and what you're doing with it. Um, it doesn't mean you got to be fucking ripped and go to the gym every single day, but it means that you don't eat fucking Taco Bell every day and never work out. You know what I mean? Like, are you intentional about the fact that you care about your life? Because if you're not, then you're not going to care about the business or selling or making money either. If you don't care about what you're doing, right? Like we all can't be, you know, the Adonis Joe figure, but like we can be, you know, somewhere in between there, right? Like, but, uh, but do we care about it? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just, I always want people investing in themselves as well. And part of that is me investing into them and saying, Hey, I want to send you to this event, or I want to send you to this training. And I'm going to provide all this stuff. I just sent four or five guys to top rep last week. Right. Awesome. And what did they get? And they came back and they said, it was amazing. We learned all this stuff, but you know what the biggest feedback was that I got from every single one of them was the time that they all got to spend together. Wow. Interesting. And that they got to bond and connect and like really be a team. And I'm like, yes, this is what I've been telling you. Like, do you finally see my vision? They're like, dude, we're fucking bought in. Right. Nice. And, and once you get them to buy into that, then all of a sudden, as you bring new people on, it's just like a sports team, right? It's just like a football team, whatever. Because then all of a sudden, rookies come in and they see that. They see that culture. They're like, ooh, I want to be part of that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then once you've built that and your seniors, you know, are doing the same thing and teaching the rookies, then, you know, like now you get to grow exponential. Awesome. All right, guys, quick break from this awesome conversation with my friend, Eric. One of the systems that you need to build out in your company if you want to have a business is your marketing system. We at Contractor Dynamics run a marketing training program where we train roofing companies on how to build and run their own marketing machine inside their businesses. In fact, we have worked with Eric and his team for several years to help them build and run their marketing machine in-house. We have trained their in-house people to build out their content, to run their social media marketing, to track everything, to take control over their brand, take control over their content calendar, and really establish themselves as one of the premier roofing companies in Omaha, Nebraska. So we've had the pleasure of working with Eric and his team over a several year period. And marketing is one of the essential systems of any business that most roofing companies simply do not have in place. So if you're interested in learning more about that, or even just getting some clarity about your marketing, because I know it's this big, scary thing that you don't really know what it is. And you know, everyone's been ripped off, hiring marketing agencies, not getting the results that they want. If you want some clarity on how to like kind of tame that beast, then feel free to check out the link below or head on over to our website at contractordynamics.com to learn more about that. If you want to schedule a call on our website, I want to let you know that that 30 minute Zoom call is either going to be with me personally, sitting right here in this chair at this desk, helping you out with your marketing or Elizabeth Lytle on our team who runs the, the operations of our company. It'll be with either one of us. We're gonna help you get some clarity on your marketing and help you build out that system in your business. So just wanna share that as it's been a, a critical component of, of Eric's building DNM roofing and siding to where it is today. Back to the show. I talk a lot about vision too, Eric. Do you have a like a written vision? You just sit down and tell people like, here's the vision or how do you communicate that? So I, I should probably get clear on the vision like statement or whatever. What we dig more into is our core values. I dig way more into our core values and what we hire and fire on um, and what's important to us, right? Which is education, um, service, and relationships, right? Service being giving back. Um, if you're not, if you're not willing to give back, 
and be part of the things that we do, then you're probably not a good fit, right? If you don't care about other people, you're probably not a good fit. We like to do something, you know, every quarter that we're giving back, whether it's, you know, food bank thing or a dog thing, or, you know what I mean? Like whatever it is, then we ask our people what they care about, because it's not just about like, what does Eric care about, right? Eric cares about roofers and recovery, blah, blah, blah. But like, it can't just be about me. I need to get everybody right. else involved. And so like, if Billy's favorite charity is dogs, which I don't give a shit about dogs, but Billy does. So if Billy cares about dogs and let's do a thing for dogs, right? Like, let's make sure that like the things that he cares about and that give him meaning in his life are part of what we're doing as a company as well to show him that we give a shit about Billy, right? That's how you keep. And, and again, that goes back to how you keep people. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Now you, your grandfather taught you a lot and you've developed this. You've had mentors, mastermind programs, things like that, that you have, you mentioned, I know that you're a part of, do you follow any sort of structure as far as like running, like we run on EOS? Do you follow any sort of structure or is it something that you have developed? How does that? I read all, I read all the EOS books. I'll be completely honest. It was too fucking much for me, but I took a lot of what I read. I think you need to understand it. Right. And I took it back to my ops, to my director of ops. And she's like very military, you know, like structure focus. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And so we kind of built it out like military style, you know, to like understand who's reporting to who, who's having conversation, who, who's having meetings with who and when and what reports am I getting and all that kind of stuff. And so that's the only way that you can do it and step away is if you are intentional about doing that, you can't just fucking leave, <laughs> right? Like you need to yeah. have a plan of how am I checking in? How am I getting numbers? How am I holding staff accountable? How am I, you know, doing all of those things? And, and, and I'll be honest, like there's moments where like, we'll have a meeting and I'll be like, man, I did a really shitty job the last two months of holding people account. Mm. Right. And I'll, and I'll have to call myself out on and be like, all right, Let's rebuild this so that we're implementing this so this doesn't go on for too long, right? It's the guys that let it go on for too long, and all of a sudden, they're like, well, that didn't work, and they're like, I got to get back in, and I got to I got to be in the middle of everything, right? As long as yeah. you're keeping that high-level touch, and then you're the visionary guy, right, or gal, and that's what I am, and I'm like, hey, I, we need to do this, this, and this. I'm like, don't ask me to implement it because that's not what I'm good at, right? But like, I know these are the things that need to be done. Now- Lexi, you're really good at that. Chris, you're really good at that. Tim, you're really good at that. I go execute that and report back to me next Monday. Yeah, that's awesome. A couple of things on that that I want to share with the audience. Uh, number one, you're talking about like the meeting structure and who talks to whom and uh, what gets reported and what reports are you seeing. That stuff sounds like so, and maybe for the like the person that's newer to business, that might sound like, man, I don't have time for all that crap. You know, it sounds so boring. It sounds lame. It's like, how does that help me make money? I totally get it, but that is the stuff that that really enables this to happen. Enables you to have two locations, have multiple things going on, travel all over the place. Those are the things that we implement too. And I just read a piece of content last week. It was I was helping a, a uh, roofing company owner out with their, they've got a couple of different owners and they're having some issues and things like that. And so the three things that I, that I outlined him are alignment, the vision. Number two is role clarity. You know, who's in what seat, what's everyone doing? Number three, communication. And those like three pillars are essential. So, uh, you know, a lot of people, again, might not like when I was a younger business owner 10 years ago, just starting out, I just wanted to hear about, you know, how do I make more money? You know, right. but this stuff, it's so key. I wish I, I, and we've just been implementing this stuff for the past like 18 months. I wish I like got into it years ago, but well, and that's the fine. And, and the difference is too, like you, you got to think about, it's hard to implement like immediately, right? If you just start a company, like you, you do need totally. to focus on, I got to make some money. I got to put some shit away. I need to learn, like you need to know how to do everything in your business. You should know how to do everything to a certain level in your business. You shouldn't have to do it, but you should understand it, right? Like I am not good at accounting, but- I understand it and I know the numbers that I need to see so that I can request what I need. And I'm not just relying on somebody smarter than me to be like, this is what you need to know. No, this is what I want to know. So get me this information and then you can get me the other as well because I'm the one that's making decisions based off information. So if you're making decisions based off of information, you better understand what information you need to be able to make decisions off. Man, we got to clip that. That's fire. 
uh that yeah, the aspect like bookkeeping marketing uh you know sales like any aspect of the business you need to know a little bit but i think one of the things that i've learned over the past couple of years is like you need to i use the word surrender and i know that's a word that you might use too like the fact that i don't need to be i don't need to do the accounting if i don't like it and if i'm not good at it i had this like i guess misbelief as a business owner that i needed to be great at all the different things and that held us back from growth sure. like that held that held our team back that held back the growth of our company. And it was just over the past year where we've been like, uh, Elizabeth is our integrator and she's running the day to day. We're like, you know what? I hate this thing. I suck at it. Like, do you want to do it? And some of those things she's like, oh, I love doing that. I'm like, really? She's like, yeah. I'm like, awesome. Great. Right. Uh, it, whether it's like holding this, you know, the sales department accountable just cause like I've been lazy about it or whatever it is. And that's okay. Admit that you're, you've been lazy about this aspect cause you don't like it. Hey, these are the areas in which I procrastinate because I just don't want to deal with those things unless I, until I absolutely have to. And just being open and transparent about that is just so, it's so freeing. And that's the only way that, well, I don't know if it's the only way, but that's a, that's a great way to, to grow, to get out of your own way. Yeah. And, and what we were talking about, it, it, you know, before we went on, on air and started recording is that you don't have to be a $20 million company to start implementing these things so that you can start freeing up your time, right? You know, you, you can be a five, six, seven, eight, ten million dollar company and you can start you can start doing these things and start stuff away. And like I've got no skin in the game on this, but if you don't read the damn Martel book, how to buy back your time, like you're an idiot. Like that is the best book. I read that, but that is the only book I've ever read in the shortest amount of time that I read it and that I stopped while I was reading it. And started writing shit down that I needed to do the next day. And then I brought awesome. it into my assistant. And I was like, now you're going to read this chapter because this is what you're going to be doing. So get used to that. Yeah, that book is awesome. And for those of you who haven't read it, we'll put the link below. Basically, it's like, hey, track your time, do a time study, see how you're actually spending your time for uh, a couple weeks, and then offload some of those $10 an hour tasks, those low level things that someone else in your company can do, or maybe it's a matter of like, you don't have someone in your company to do those things, but go out and hire a part-time or full-time person that can handle those things. So you can elevate. That's the only way that you're going to, that's basically buying back your time. You're set, you're getting rid of the lower level things and you're focusing on those, you know, those thousand dollar an hour activities, if you will. So fantastic. Yeah, book. A, amazing book. I, I didn't read it until later. And I was so upset that I didn't buy into that deal that Hunter offered to go do that little mastermind thing at Dan's house. And I missed out on that. And I, I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, I'm busy. Like, I don't even know who he is, like whatever. And then I ended up reading this book like a month later. And I was like, oh my God, how did I miss son of a bit? <laughs> well, that's all right. Eddie, that's a great lesson right there for everyone. Like, well, I think a lot of our audience reads books. You got to read it, but also implement it. That's the big thing, right? And I, and I think that's why audio books are shit. Because no, audiobooks are shit. You're you're driving, and you're like, "Well, that was a good idea," and then you forget it the minute that it's gone, and you don't have it in front of you. You can't highlight it. You can't write anything down. Right? Listen to podcasts when you're driving. Don't listen to books when you're driving. Read books like a grown up. <laughs> I love that. Same old podcast too. I was listening to a Donald Miller uh, story brand guy uh, podcast this morning when I was running. And it was really good. And I was like, man, I got to pause this because I'd rather listen to this when I can take notes, not when I'm running because right. I'm just going to forget it. So yeah, it's all about implementation. So Eric, let's dive into that. Like you've taken some things from your grandfather, EOS, different things, and you developed this team method. And I'd like to dive into that because it's really, I think, really powerful. So uh, yeah. let's dig in. So yeah, a couple of years ago, um, you know, I started getting asked to speak a little bit more. And I, my, my kind of my brand was just, you know, authenticity, this and that the other, a lot of people just correlated authenticity with the fact that I curse and don't give a fuck. Right. Which is not what it is. Right. And so I like to always talk about that real quick first, because being authentic is just being authentic to you. Right. It's not being somebody else. Right. It's not pretending to be Gary V. It's not pretending to be Ed Milad. It's not pretending to be Andy Priscilla. Quit fucking pretending to be these other people. Figure out who you are, own that space, 
and own it unapologetic, right? I do not apologize for who I am, which means a lot of people don't like me and I'm okay with that. I'm not going out to offend people, right, on purpose or anything like that. But if I happen to, then it's a byproduct. I did a couple of speeches that, that talked about leading with authenticity. But what I knew was that there was more to it. And I was actually working with my coach, Clay Moffitt, and we were going through this. And I was like, I need to come up with a new thing that implements all these other things that I do. And I was like, he's like, well, what are the most th- things that you think are the most important in, you know, in leading and keeping people? And I was like, well, obviously authenticity. I'm like, okay. And he's like, what else? And I was like, um, empathy. I'm like, I don't think people talk about empathy enough, right? And like understanding where somebody else is coming from. Like, I don't have to agree with them, but do I understand where they're coming from? So I can have a conversation. It's like, all right. It's like, what else? I'm like, trust. Like we, all this shit leads back to trust. Like they have to be able to trust you and and you have to trust them. And he's like, okay, he's like, what else? And I'm like, I don't know what else. And he's like, can I make a suggestion? He's like, yes. He's like, meaning. And I'm like, ooh. He's like, you you want to give meaning to your people? I'm like, yeah, every day. Um, and he's like, you, you know why else I said meaning? And I'm like, no. And he's like, because it starts with an M. I'm like, well, who gives a fuck if it starts with an M? He's like, and he's, <laughs> and he's like, well, because now we can make it the team method because you can have us, empathy, authenticity, and meaning. I'm like, oh my God, this is why I have a coach. Uh, you know, like, because yeah. I honest to God, like I wouldn't have thought of it, right? It would have taken me two years just to think of that little simple thing and have that acronym. So I took I took that and I built it into this keynote to teach about how do we implement trust? How do we implement empathy? How do we implement being authentic and teaching people how to be authentic to themselves? And how do we give them meaning so that they don't feel like a number in your business, right? And that they're just they're just showing up and going through the motions and making you money, right? How do we do those things? And that's kind of become my new brain, right? Is trying to teach that, which is leading into the other thing that we're you know going to start building. All right. Awesome. So team makes a lot of sense. And I think that's what, when you really, they, you know, they say you don't really understand something fully in, until you teach it. And so like putting things in frameworks like this, where people can really grasp what it is because, you know, they, they might see, oh, Eric runs a company with multiple locations and got some other things going on. Like, I want to be there, but like, how do I do that? And so yeah, putting something in a framework, like the team method makes a lot of sense. And the have... purpose, and so to be clear, I guess the one thing I missed that I didn't say was that the purpose of the team method is it, it, the way that I, I try to make it catchy, right? In the beginning, though, is how to create a cult like following inside your company. Now, obviously, that sounds extreme, but at the end of the day, like, what are, what are we trying to do? We are, we're trying to create a fucking cult, right? We want people that will never leave, right? That's what a cult is. They don't fucking leave <laughs> because they drank the Kool Aid, yeah. right? We want them to drink the Kool Aid and stay. Love it. Does anyone have a DNM roofing and siding tattoo yet? No. Oh, yeah, Benny and I are talking about something recently, and uh, well, the thing that we're launching, and and we're trying to think of a name, and I'm like, I want something that's cool enough where someone would would tattoo it on their body, like you know, uh, Arate Syndicate with uh, and Mylet and Andy. Well, Mike Claudio has a, an Arate tattoo on his arm, and I'm like, I want something that's cool enough that someone's gonna get a tattoo of it. Might not be me because I don't have any tattoos, but uh, someone will. So I will. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, though. I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with that. I got to come up with that. That's right. a new goal. Yeah. For me, so thank you. A name that is that is tattoo worthy, I guess. So yeah, I've heard you talk about this a little bit in terms of like acquiring people, for, like getting h- hiring people. But then the other part of that 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 most companies don't focus on. What is that, and why is that so important? I think hiring's easy, right? You can go fucking hire recruiters and you can bring in a hundred people, right? That's not really that big of a deal. Um, and, and we talked about personal branding so that hopefully you're bringing in good people because they align with your values and are watching what you're doing. And so like, those are the people that you attract, right? Because you attract what you put out into the world. So mm-hmm. if you're a piece of shit and you're putting shit out into the world, you're going to attract shit. But if you're putting good things out into the world, you're going to attract good things. I think that the bigger picture, the bigger play is how do you then keep Right. And I think that that is something that people are missing when they say it's so far to find good talent. No, no, no. It's easy to find people. And then it's also easy to train those people, but then it's hard to keep those people. Right. And so that's why I'm building this group. And I, I don't want to call it a mastermind. I fucking hate that name, but like I'm building a group, like a group coaching call 
uh, deal where there's going to be different levels so that we can put leaders, we can put owners into it, um, and they can learn how to continuously invest into those people, um, how to give back and how to make sure that those people stay, right? Like you're not going to keep everybody. We're always going to have turnover. Like that's just a thing that happens. But are we actually being intentional about keeping our top talent? And if the only way you keep your top talent is money, you're fucked. That's just, it's the same concept as, you know, if you're the low price roofer and you're like the low cost, you know, hey, we'll beat your prices. You're F that way. And same thing with the, you know, with paying people, like there's always going to be someone that's going to pay them 10 bucks more to come over to their company. All the time. My people get approached all the time. Right. And, and they come to me and they tell me, and I was like, Hey, like, I'm going to give you every opportunity in the world. Right. And like, and if I need to adjust salaries or something, like maybe I missed a year and I fucked up and I didn't, you know what I mean? Like I have to, I have to be cognizant of all that kind of stuff. Cause we get caught up in shit and all of a sudden three years went by. Right. I'm like, oh my yeah. God, where did three years go? Right. And and we get caught up in that. And so like I'm always cognizant of that. And everybody's always getting paid extremely, you know, like more than fair. Right. I'm always going to compensate very well, but I'm not going to go buy people. Right. Either. Right. I'm not going to come in and be like, oh, your guy's paying you 80,000. I'll give you 150. Right. And there's a lot of these companies out there that's all they're doing. They're trying to go, oh, and I'll pay you 60% split and all this shit. And it's like, well, that's great. But here's the thing, guys. Here's what you don't understand. If they overpay everybody, then they're not going to have any money to stay in business at the end of the year. So like, you're not actually going to get paid. You're just getting this false promise of what you're going to get paid, but you're not actually going to get fucking paid because he's not going to have any money. He's giving it all away with every damn sale. So like, don't, you know what I mean? Like you got to be smarter than that. So, and I explained that and I'm like, if you want to take that risk, go for it. Right. I might not be here when it doesn't work out, but I understand that if you need to go test those water. But the hope is, yeah. is that I've built a culture enough here where they trust me and they come talk to me. And they're like, why wouldn't I want to do this? And I give them the answers and they're like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't want to do that. Yeah. And I think a lot of business owners also are looking to buy team members, employees, because it's kind of like a shortcut. They just want to like bring in unicorns to like run the company and have like a Tim Grieve, right? Yeah, uh, but like before, it's not that like you are continually investing your people. They're investing in themselves. Now they're like forming these bonds with one another and spending quality time together. Like, yep. I think so many business owners are just like, yeah, I want to pay this guy to come in and and run my company, right? It just doesn't work like that. So, especially that, right? You know, like I mean, I'll steal somebody. I don't give a fuck. Like if they're looking to go somewhere and they're not happy where they are. The, I've made a decision that like it would be disingenuous and and not fair to them if I didn't offer them a place to be where people care about each other and the culture is good, right? Because yeah. there's so many toxic work environments out there today that if we're not giving people an opportunity to get the hell out of those toxic work environments, like we're not doing our job either. Right? True, true. So like I got no problem stealing somebody, but I'm not gonna, and that, that's got a negative connotation to it. But like, but I'm not going out there and buy. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to offer them 20,000 more than what they're making just to get them. I'm just going to say, this is what we do here. If you like that and you want to be part of that team and part of that culture, we'd love to have. Awesome. Awesome. So tell us a little bit more about this, this non mastermind, this group that you're uh, putting together. I don't know what it is, man. I just never want to call something, you know, like what everybody else is. Like, I don't like calling my podcast a podcast. I call it a show. Yeah. Like, I hate calling it a podcast. And like this, I don't want to call it a mastermind. It's a group of people, obviously, and here it is. It, it is a mastermind, fine, but it's well, gonna have. Right, you don't. I, you I don't know what else to call it. I got to come up with a better name, I guess. Well, it's like it's like that name has become almost like perverted. Like I don't like to call. I don't yeah. call myself a marketer, right? It's a way that you position yourself or or whatever yes. it is that you're doing. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out what that is, but and so we're gonna have three levels, right? And the purpose of the group is to teach how to get retain talent, to keep them, to inspire them, to keep them learning and keep them on your team because people will hire, 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 but not spend the money and the time to keep and retain people. So there's going to be three levels to it. There's going to be three levels. There's going to be a low cost version where we're going to do two group calls a month. Um, a lot of it's going to revolve around the team method, right? And we're going to dig into trust, empathy, authenticity, meaning how we give that to our people, uh, giving back. I'll have guests 
speakers come in, you know, once in a while as well. So they, you know, don't get tired of just listening to me. That'll be kind of level one that anybody can get it right. It's going to be unlimited. Many people will want to get on that as they can. Then there's going to be a second level that'll include those group coaching calls. And then once a month, get a one-on-one with me. So we can dig in deeper to what we talked about, you know, that month, or we can go a completely different route on anything else, you know, like you want to talk, right? Um, whether it's coaching or health, maybe it's recovery or it's, you know, anything, right? And then there's the executive level. The executive level is going to be the calls, two private calls with me a month. And then I'm putting together a group trip once a year that's going to be based on the principles of the team method. So we're going to do exercises in trust in empathy, in authenticity, and in meaning, but we're going to go somewhere really fucking cool, and we're going to go somewhere that has water, and we're going to go under that water. So that is the goal. Um, That's what we're going to be doing. Um, I've got connections on islands and all that kind of stuff, and we're going to put together a really, and it's going to be limited to the first nine people that sign up uh, for that, that part. The The first executive group is only going to be limited to nine people. Um, and people have asked me, how are you going to choose those nine people? I choose those nine people. These are going to be coming and hanging out with me and my friends, right? Like I'm going to invite friends to go as well that want to train, right? Or, you know, want to help out. I might call Joe and be like, Joe, you want to come on this fucking trip? Like we'll pay for it. But you lead a breakout one day. Uh, yeah, dude, I'm in, right? Like I'm going to leverage my relationships and like we all get to do, do cool, fun shit together, right? Let's go do that. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. And then maybe in the next year, it'll grow and we'll make the group bigger and and whatever. I want to make sure that it's personalized. The best masterminds that I've ever been a part of are when they started and there was 12 to 15 of us. And like, there's guys that I still talk to today that I learned so much from because we got to have this intimate moment with each other and it wasn't 150 dudes trying to figure out, right? I mean, and obviously the way that they do that now is you got 150 dudes, you got to break them up into groups of 12, right? So that they can they can learn from each other. But this is how I wanted to start because I want to have some people that haven't had the opportunity to have this experience before, have an experience like I've had with these other groups um, that I've been a part of, which has been amazing. And I'm not going to stop being in my other groups, right? Like, because uh-huh. I learned so much from all of that. But I want to facilitate something as well because- Sometimes you can hear the same thing from a different person and it lands differently. And maybe somebody needs to hear how I say it so that they can get it. Yeah. And someone needs to hear how you say it. Or like if you're in one of those levels where you're getting one-on-ones with Eric, then like you're getting contextual advice based on your particular situation, right. which is is huge, right? Because there's so much free content out there. We both have podcasts or shows, right? There's There's so much there, but like, if you want, like, Hey, here's my situation personally, business wise, whatever, what do you recommend that I do that personalized, uh, recommendation is, is so valuable. So, and the cool thing is, is that if I don't know the answer to the question, I know somebody that does, right. I'm not going to pretend that I know everything. Like some of these coaches out there are like, I fucking can answer it. Maybe you don't man. Right. Like there's shit that maybe I don't know. And if I don't know the answer to your question, I'm going to be like, you know what? That's a great question. And I'm going to go yeah. find the answer for you because I know a million people. And so I'm going to go it, figure that out for you. That is awesome. Yeah, guys, like indirect endorsement, not that Eric needs it, but indirect endorsement for something like this. My first three years in business, I, for some reason, some crazy ass reason, I, th- I thought I needed to figure out everything on my own. And uh, maybe it's just my blue collar, like work ethic growing up in the construction industry. If something needs to get done, I'm just going to put my head down and do it, right? Yeah. It was three in that I joined my first like group coaching program. This guy named Tim's coach and it was that was 2015. And now here we are in 2023, 8 years later, and I still have a coach. And I'm still a member of Masterminds. And I still pay people to like have access to them. I have a coaching call tomorrow and like just it's so just so valuable to get that that personalized like you know, just different perspective on things. So, you know, whether it's Eric's group or something else, like just- Yeah, but maybe it's not mine, but if it's not, go find something, right? You have to find something. And ours, 
We do have a name though. It's the cult culture. The cult culture. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Because that's what we're building. Yeah. I mean, Eric didn't get to where he is right now doing all the things he's doing that we were just talking about by like trying to figure it out on his own. And and I didn't either. So yeah, check it out. Where uh, When's that going to be launched? We're recording this in late August. What's your time frame? We're hoping to launch it uh, probably in a week. We've got the, we're getting the landing, the landing page and everything is going to be, is going to be finished by next week. Um, I've got all the pricing and everything all figured out. Um, and then I've got a guy that is working on a partnership as well to go after some of his clients that, that align with what we're doing. And so, because here's the other thing, I don't know how many different trade, you know, like I know that you're roofing, but like, this isn't just going to be for roofing, right? It's anybody that builds team. So it can be real estate. It can be financial. It can be, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're building yeah. teams and you're trying to keep teams, that's who I want to come to hang out, right? And be cool, right? Like just, I, I want cool people to be part of the group. So if you're a douche bag, don't apply. Isn't it cool? Uh, isn't it cool that you're at 44 years old, like you're at a point in your life where you can choose like who you want to spend time with, right? Like, like that's such an awesome thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's you, but it's a decision that you have to make. Right. Yeah. I had to make that decision a while ago that like, not everybody's my client and I don't need everybody's money. Right. Uh-huh. I need, I need the people's money that I align with and I want to have relationships with. That is and awesome. Yeah. And that's it. And if I had believed that earlier in my life, you know how many pain in my asses I would have avoided? Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's hard to understand and believe when you're young though, because you think you need every job, every client, you know what I mean? Like you feel like you need everything, but you don't. Some of that just comes with that experience, uh, yeah. like gray hairs that we both have in our beards. Like some of that just, yeah, it does. Yeah. But, uh, it comes with a lot of hard work, a lot of mistakes, a lot of screwing up, a lot of sleepless nights and all that stuff. But it's just a, just cool to recognize that position that you're in. So where, you know, you can, you can, you can do choose. that. So yeah, fun. like the truth. Thank you. So Eric, as we, uh, there's a lot of business owners listening to this, like, man, I, that sounds awesome. I, I just, I have so much stuff going on. I'm not sure that, like what to, what to do, how to get in my own way. Like anything that we didn't cover that you just kind of want to impart on that, that business owner trying to, trying to figure it all out. Stop complaining about how busy you are and figure out how to get fucking intentional about the time that you're spending during the day. Wow. Every time I have that conversation with somebody and it can be a, it could be a rep too, right? It could be a rep. It could be whatever. Like I'm so busy. I'm like, yeah, but you ain't doing shit, right? What are you doing? So, and I feel like owners, especially if they're newer owners or they, you know, whenever, or even if you've been doing it a while, but you haven't got people to really help you, everybody's so busy, but nothing's getting done. So if, if that's the case with you, it means you're missing something, right? So what are you missing? Let's figure out what you're missing. Is it the talent? Is it the people? Is it the systems? Is it the process? Maybe you don't have any systems and process in your business and you still keep fucking notepads in your door, you know, when you, you write up a deal and it's sitting in your door and you forgot to turn it in and you didn't scan it, and blah, 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 right? Like, do you have systems and processes? Maybe that's what you're missing. But if you're not taking the time to get somebody to assist you, right? Because here's the one thing that I really learned that I'll finish. I never had a partner in any business that I've owned and I've owned a few, okay? I've never had a partner, like a true like equity partner, 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 partner. So I don't have anybody to like throw things off, right? And there's days where I envy some of my friends that have heart per se, right? But it's a very fleeting thought because then I'm like, hmm, no, don't want a partner because then I'm not making the decisions. I don't get to own every decision. So what I need is a partner in what I'm doing, which is a coach, which is a mentor, which is somebody that's in my life that I can sit down and be like, dude, I do not know how to navigate this. Can you help? Because that's what partners end up doing, right? You have somebody that is the yin to your yang. Well, fuck it. I'll just go buy that person. Yes. I'll go pay for that person so I don't have to give them 50% of my business. That's stupid. I, I'll go hire three fucking coaches, right? And one that does financial, one that does you know what I do, and one that does sales training, right? Go get three right? You don't need that. It's not just one size fits all. You need to have different people in your life to teach you different things that you need to know to be successful. I've had to do that. I don't know everything. 
but I know a lot of shit because I've been around for a long time. So I feel like it's my it's my responsibility now to figure out how to pass that information on. I've been doing that for years, but I've been doing it on my time, right? And I've gotten to a place in my life where now we need to budget time, right? Because I've only got so much to give and I want to spend it with my family and my employees and everything else. So if people want to have that time and that wisdom, well, then there needs to be a transaction, right? Because when there's a transaction, then you can hold me accountable to being there. And I can hold you accountable to being, right? And it's not, hey, when do you have time? Right? It's we're meeting at Thursday at three. And I'm being paid either way. So you better show up so that we can be yep. intentional about this transaction of me helping you to the best of my ability. Yep. I'm all about transactional relationships with coaches. I fucking hate free mentor shit, right? Like I need to find a mentor. No, because they're going to hang out with you when they're when their schedule allows them to. And that might not be when you need the information that you need or the help that you need. When you have a mm-hmm. coach or a mentor, you need it to be a transactional relationship so that you can hold them accountable to being where they said they were going to be at this time to help you. And if it is not a transactional relationship and you're not exchanging goods for services, right? Then you're not going to get out of it what you're hoping to get out of it. And then you're going to get upset well, because Bill will call me back. Well, because you're not fucking paying Bill. Bill's got to go pay his bills. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Hundred percent accountability, and then effort follows money, right? So, for like, if you're paying for something, you're going to be more likely to take action on that on that thing. So, yes, yes. Awesome, Eric. Well, uh, w- uh, one one question I've always wanted to ask you: Did you actually invent the word "fuck"? No, but I perfected it. <laughs> All right, love it. So uh, you've got a lot, a lot of th- different things going on. People are digging this content. They're digging you. They're digging your vibe. Where can they uh, learn more about Eric Obrams and everything you're doing? I mean, come check out the podcast. Be authentic or get the fuck out. Uh, website is be authentic or, or GTFO or EricObrams.com. You can obviously find us on all the old social media stuff. But like, just shoot me a message, right? Lexi or I respond to every message. Um, and if you're interested in, in joining the cult culture uh, group, shoot us a message. Uh, we'll have details out next week, but obviously this isn't going to probably air until after that drops or whatever. But um, you know, reach out and, and by the time this airs, I'm sure I'll give Joe a link and he can throw it in that in the comments. Awesome, perfect. Well, thanks so much, Eric. I know you're a busy guy. You got a lot going on. You got a you got a haircut coming up, so we'll make sure you get to that on time. So thanks for sharing your, uh, your experience, your wisdom, your insights, and your passion with us today. I appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. What'd you think? Eric is an awesome person, huh? Well, as he says in the podcast, he is not for everyone, and that is completely fine. But I think that everyone listening to this, watching this episode, was able to get at least a few nuggets out of it. And I hope you took notes on that team method because... It is really powerful. Now, I can't say that we have implemented the TAM exactly, but we follow EOS system, which is is very similar in nature, has a lot of the same components in it. And I'm a big believer in systems and processes and following a proven framework instead of just trying to figure it out all on our own. And on top of that, Eric announced his new group that he's forming, the Colts Culture. So by the time that this episode is live, His group should be already formed, so there should be a link below. But feel free to reach out to Eric, check him out on his website, check out his Be Authentic or GTFO podcast show. Uh, He's got a whole bunch of content out there, really approachable guy, so feel free to reach out to him. But as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your time and attention, and we'll see you soon.